This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 28th day of June in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting, and here's what we're tracking tonight. Several parts of the main roads along the east coast of Demerara were blocked today as residents of Golden Grove and nearby villages launched a massive protest this morning over the police shooting death of Golden Grove youth Quinden Bacchus. Bacchus was shot dead just over three weeks ago by a police officer in the village of Haslington. The investigation into the police shooting death is being conducted by the Police Complaints Authority and has been crawling at a snail's pace, with family members complaining that they have not been receiving any updates. This morning, a large number of villagers started the protest action in Golden Grove by blocking off the main roads through the village, forcing vehicles to turn back. No peace, no At the beginning of the protest, police officers were in the area attempting to get the residents to clear the roads, but those efforts failed. The protest quickly spread to other villages as many of the protesters called on villagers to join them in their march for justice. Some stores along the east coast of the Marara quickly closed their doors as the protesters, many of them on motorcycles and bicycles, continued their march towards the city. Old vehicles were pulled onto the roadways in a number of villages as the protesters continued their march. In a statement, again, a police force called for an end to the protest while indicating that the police rank fingered in the shooting that remains in police custody. Quinlan Bacchus was shot six times by the police during an alleged undercover operation. Five of those gunshots were to his back, while the sixth was to his chest at close range. The police initially stated that the youth fired at them, but video recordings from CCTV cameras in the area do not appear to support that contention. The police commissioner has promised a thorough investigation into the incident. More news when we return. How fast is fiber? Think fast. GGT Fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50, 100, and 150 megabits per second. That's fast enough to stream movies and music, to chat with Gran and Fran, to study, and more. What would you do? Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. The International Building Expo is the only expo of its kind in the Caribbean, fostering home ownership and catapulting the construction sector with innovative and sustainable building practices, creating and advancing linkages among local, regional and international stakeholders. It's the new frontier for building a one Guyana. The International Building Expo, commencing from July 22 at the Guyana National Stadium. Register now at www.buildingexpo.gy Doors and windows, Republic. rooms and more Republic. A brand new rug on the floor, come to Republic Come to Republic, whatever you need you got it Come to and get your mortgage, live the dream with Republic 95 to 100% financing, 50% wave of negotiation fees, plus one lucky person gets their mortgage paid in full. Turn some day into today. Talk to Republic Bank about your low-cost mortgage today. Need to renew your motor vehicle license? 
skip the lines and save time by using the GRA's License Revenue Office drive through facility. Located at the GRA's parking lot, Camp and Lamaha Streets. Simply present your expired motor vehicle license and a copy of your motor vehicle registration at the front window, pay an uplift at the second window and drive on your way. It's that easy. The LRO opens Monday to Thursdays from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and Fridays up to 2.30 p.m. GRA, your partner in development. Get a chance to win a brand new Toyota Waze when you apply for a home loan. Get pre-approved by applying online, in bank or at the building expo. Apply now! Promotion ends July 24 and the drawing will take place on the final day of the International Building Expo. Here's your chance to win and drive home a Toyota Raze. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Welcome back. Members of the Joint Services were dispatched to the East Coast of Marara Corridor this afternoon to monitor the roadway and mitigate any acts of crime during the protests. The move came amidst the protests by villagers over the police shooting death of Quinton Bacchus and reports of robberies and looting at the Monrepo market during the protests. The police said it has received the reports of the robberies and looting and has started an investigation. At the Monrepo market, the stands for roadside vendors were set alight, forcing many of them to run for safety. They later complained that their grocery items were stolen and their stalls completely destroyed. One woman said more than $1 million in groceries were stolen from her stall before it was set on fire by some of the protesters. A minibus that was used by another vendor to transact her business was also set on fire and items stolen. All my box of grapes, all my apple, all my bag potato, all my garlic, everything just gone all right now. The 400 pound plant to be buying this morning, everything gone, every single thing gone. About 600,000, because we have plenty of greens. We stand well, stand the greens. My well, God. Well, big loose is we good. We have everything, everything gone. gone. This gone. is everything? Yes. Nearly, nearly 800,000 dollars. Mm. Most of the protesters dispersed in the marketplace with many of them spotted on their bicycles with groceries and other items. After the protesters left, many of the Monrepo stallholders and residents came onto the roadway as the joint services moved into the community to maintain order. Home Affairs Minister Robson Ben was rebuked by the Monrepo residents as he asked them to clear the roads. <laughs> In a statement, President Air Finale condemned the damage to property and theft that took place at the Monorepo market. He said the government has already made it clear that it supports the ongoing independent investigation to bring justice to the family of Quinton Bacchus. The president said similarly the government is supporting all actions that may be necessary to ensure justice for all those who lost property, were beaten or robbed during the protests. The family of the youth who was shot dead by the police condemned the actions of those persons who used the protest to rob others and loot their stalls. I was at BV, but coming down now, I saw the smoke and what's up. What I'm saying that this is not nothing political because we black people, we lose our sons also. The Indian people, they're losing any, anybody. The police doing anything to anybody. Me you know how this now involved and whatsoever. And it's a disgrace to us because we were protesting peacefully this morning. From Golden Grove, I came from Golden Grove on to B, up, up to BV and then I turned back. But this is what I saw, somebody bus born, the road is burning, but we're destroying our own self. And they need to stop it. If we are protesting, we can protest in a better manner. The family members said their protests are peaceful and have always been peaceful as they continue their calls for justice. 
During the height of the protest this morning along the east coast of the Marara, President Irfan Ali urged the protesting east coast residents to allow the Police Complaints Authority to do its work and wait on the process to be completed as the probe continues into the shooting death of Quindon Bacchus. In a televised statement from State House, President Ali said he has been assured by the Chairman of the Police Complaints Authority that the investigation is progressing well and should be completed and the report handed over by Monday of next week. I'm for the advice that very early in the new week, the Police Complaint Authority, uh, retired Justice Ramlal, the Chair, would be in a position to present their findings and investigation uh, based on investigation to the DPP. The president said he has also been informed that a second police officer is now in custody assisting the investigators with the probe. President Ali said with the two police officers still in custody and the probe ongoing, he sees no basis for the protest that started this morning. So there is no basis for a type of action on the road that we are seeing now. The report will be presented on Monday and be available for the public, for the news, to inquire factually what the report states. So I'm asking residents to please go home, to please clear the roadways, and to please allow the system to work. All of us want justice. All of us want fairness. But we cannot base our action on misleading information. Mr. Ali said he will work to ensure that there is justice and fairness in the system. At this moment, for the type of behavior we are seeing on the road, as your president, I assure you that at all times, I will work to ensure there is just and fairness in the system. I ask you to go home. I ask you to allow the system to work. And I ask you to await the report. Let the institutions work. The Ghana police force was forced to dispatch the riot police to prevent the protesters from continuing their march toward the city. The protest started at Golden Grove and moved through a number of East Coast villages and gathering more support as the march continued as they were seeking justice for Quinton Bacchus. The opposition APNU AFC has condemned the escalation of the protest today on the east coast of the Marara, which it believes could distract from the real reason for the protest action. Hundreds of residents from the East Coast of Marara took to the streets this morning, calling for justice for Golden Grove youth Quinton Bacchus, who was shot dead by a special branch police officer earlier this month at Haslington. Amid the protests, which became fiery and was marred by looting at the Monrepo market, the opposition added its voice in condemnation. The opposition said it condemns all acts of violence and criminality, and that such acts only serve to undermine and distract from the legitimate aims of the protest action. The opposition said though the protests are linked directly to the police execution of Quinton Bacchus, the outpouring of persons on the streets is driven by the deep and persistent grievances that many Guyanese feel in light of discrimination and bad governance at the hands of the government. President Irfan Ali earlier today condemned the looting of the marketplace and he has promised to hold those who instigated the protest accountable as well as those who were found perpetrating violence during the protest. The opposition also called today on the police to exercise restraint in dealing with the protesters, pointing out that unnecessary and excessive force would only exacerbate an already volatile situation. President Ali today traveled to the east coast of the Marara. After meeting with angry residents in Monripo who had their stalls looted and burned during this morning's protest, the president moved to the community of Buxton as he tried to quell the protest taking place several villages away at Golden Grove. While in Buxton, the president declared that he also wants justice for Quinton Bacchus and justice for the vendors whose stalls were looted by some persons during the morning's protest. I want justice for your family too. 
for justice for your family guy and justice for other people. So, Mr. President. All right. A relative of Quindon Backus told the president that he should have responded earlier to the cries of the citizens for justice in the case. But I want I, to, since, since my cousin there is no you come up the East Coast. You listen to me. Right? Listen. No, you come up to the East Coast. You listen to me now. You gotta listen to me too, man. I am listening to right? you. No, you, you I see you on the East Coast. The day when they get a protest of them, the next day that's when you see one one bigger heads come out for talk to my family. Right? And that's bad. If we didn't do in a protest, yeah, we wanna see nobody for justice. You see? I'm not I'm not holding back nothing. I'm not holding back nothing. I am not I just need justice of my family. I am not holding back nothing. Alright. You listen to me now. Listen, you can't go away now. You listen to me. Leave rest. President Ali repeated that citizens should allow the Police Complaints Authority to do its work. He said the Police Complaints Authority is an independent body, and he has been given the assurance that the investigation should be completed by next Monday. Family members of the dead youth have condemned those persons who use the protest to loot stalls and take part in other criminal acts. The president has indicated that the vendors will be compensated for their losses. Let's tell you now that the local content secretariat has defended its decision to deny granting a local content certificate to the Rams Logistics Company. In a response to queries from the company, the local content secretariat outlined a series of requirements that it says the Rams company failed to meet to be added to the local content register. The secretariat found that the information provided was insufficient for proper compliance evaluation to be done in accordance with the local content law. It also found that the company did not reach all of the requirements in order for a certificate to be granted. The Secretariat's director, Martin Pertab, explained that the company submitted articles of incorporation without the relevant information. And with the sale of 51% of the company's shares to Trinidad-based Guyanese Deepak Lal, the Secretariat said it was not provided with the corresponding articles of incorporation and the resolutions for the increase in the total number of shares that a company could issue. Although Rams Logistics had explained that the majority of its shares is owned by Deepak Lal, the Secretariat said it was not provided with any official documentation which can confirm the company's claim. It said there was no sign of filed or certified company resolutions. The local content secretariat said even with the most recent documents on the allotment of shares was not provided. The company was also warned of the $10 million fine that companies could face for submitting misleading information to the local content secretariat. Last week, the Rams company called a press conference to complain about not being provided with the information regarding its denial of the certificate. Without that certificate, the company will not be able to continue to operate in the local oil and gas sector. Rams Logistics is the largest logistics contractor currently in the local oil and gas sector. It has been in operation in Guyana since 2013. A 23-year-old miner from Bartica has become the latest victim of a mining pit accident, triggering yet another investigation by the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission and the Ministry of Labor. The young miner Akim Khan died on Sunday afternoon when a mining pit that he operated at Sand Hill Bag Dam in the Cayuni River collapsed while he and another employee were working in the pit. A police report stated that when the pit started to collapse, Khan and his 25-year-old employee started to run, but his feet got trapped in a jetting hose and he was quickly covered by the sand as the employee managed to run to safety and raise an alarm. The police said another miner from the area rushed to the scene and they started to dig the area where the young miner was covered. It took about 10 minutes for them to reach his body which was motionless. The body has since been transferred to the Bartica Hospital for post-mortem examination. Just last week, the Ghana Gold and Diamond Miners Association encouraged miners to put safer mining practices in place following a number of deadly mining accidents in recent months. It was a long car ride home, and Kyla started to crave the all-natural Ripple's Crunch. Ah yes, that was all she could think about. She thought she was dreaming, but it seemed so real. Daydream or not, the craving still hit, and she couldn't wait to rip into it. Sunshine Snacks Ripple's Chips, rip into 100% real potato goodness. Sunshine Snacks Ripples, rip into real potato goodness. Get a chance to win a brand new Toyota Waze when you apply for a home loan. 
Get pre-approved by applying online in bank or at the building expo. Apply now! Promotion ends July 24 and the drawing will take place on the final day of the International Building Expo. Here's your chance to win and drive home a Toyota Rays. GBTI, we see Guyana through your eyes. Whatever you need, you got it. Come through and get your mortgage. Live the dream with Republic. 95 to 100% financing. 50% wave of negotiation fees. Plus, one lucky person gets their mortgage paid in full. Turn someday into today. Talk to Republic Bank about your low cost mortgage today. Like Oculus Quest 2, Mini 2 Drone, Nintendo Switch, and many more top gaming prices. Check below for our details. Fuel it up and drive, super 95. Fuel it up and drive, super 95. Protect your fuel system, boy. High mileage and performance, boy. Guy Oil Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Across the region tonight, let's begin in Colombia, where 49 inmates died during an overnight riot in a prison in the southwestern Colombian city of Tuluá. The head of the National Prisons Agency announced. The director of the agency told local radio that the fire started during the protests by the prisoners. He said it was a tragic and disastrous event. Another 30 persons were injured during the incident. It was also announced and dozens have been evacuated from the prisons. The prison has a total of 1,267 inmates and the cell block where the fire occurred housed 180 inmates. In Colombia, as in many Latin American countries, prisons are highly overcrowded. Colombia's jails have the capacity for 81,000 inmates, but currently house about 97,000, according to official figures. The president of Colombia, who is on a visit to Portugal, said on Twitter that the incident will be fully investigated. The government of Trinidad and Tobago closed schools today as forecasters warned that a tropical disturbance will bring heavy rains and gusty winds to the southeastern Caribbean. The approaching storm also prompted Trinidad-based Caribbean Airlines to cancel at least four flights. A tropical storm warning was in effect for Trinidad and Tobago as well as Grenada and its dependence with forecasters warning that up to six inches of rain could fall there and in northeastern Venezuela. The tropical storm warning was issued for Venezuela as well as the islands of Aruba Bonaire and Curacao. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said the system, which was expected to grow into tropical storm Bunny, would pass over or near the southern Windward Islands tonight. And finally tonight, international news. Sri Lanka has suspended sales of fuel for non-essential vehicles as it faces its worst economic crisis in decades. For the next two weeks, only buses, trains and vehicles used for medical services and transporting food will be allowed to fill up with fuel. Schools in urban areas have shut, while officials have told the country's 22 million residents to work from home. The South Asian nation is in talks over a bailout deal as it struggles to pay for imports such as food and fuel. 
Sri Lanka is the first country to take the drastic step in halting sales of fuel to ordinary people since the 1970s oil crisis, when fuel was rationed in the US and Europe, and speed limits introduced to reduce demand. One official said the ban underlined the steep rise in oil pricing and limited foreign exchange reserves in Sri Lanka. Many of the island's residents don't know how they will cope without fuel. They have been long queues at filling stations across the country for several months. And that's your News Source Evening Bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley, reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.